All right then gang, so in the last video, we created this cloud function add request and it was a callable function and we did a couple of checks and then finally added a new record to the database for that request. Now in this video, what I'd like to do is call this function from the front end so we can actually start adding data to the database. Now to do that, we're gonna have to react to a submit event of this form because the user adds in a request, they click on this, it submits the form. We need to react to that and then call that function and then send the data a user types in here to that function. So the first thing we need to do is get a reference on this form. So over in app.js at the top over here, I've already done that. Request form is equal to documents.querySelector new request form. And if we take a look inside the index file, we should be able to see new request form. So we're grabbing a reference of this form first of all. And now we need to add an event listener to that to listen for submit events. So let's open up app.js and down here, I'm gonna now do another comment to say, add a new request. Okay, so under that we'll say request form and then add event listener and that is gonna be a submit event. We fire a function when this happens and we take in the event parameter because we say e.prevent default and that prevents the default action of the form, the page being refreshed. Okay, the next thing we need to do is get a handle onto the cloud function that we want to invoke. Now to do that, we say const and then give this constant a name. I'm gonna call it add request because that is what the function is called over here. You don't need to name them the same thing. I think it's good to do because it kind of makes sense. So that is gonna be equal to firebase.functions. Then we invoke that and then we say dot HTTPS callable and spell this correctly. And inside here, we say what function we wanna get a reference to. We want the add request function. That's what we called it over here. So now we have a reference to that function and we're storing that function inside this constant. Now all we need to do is invoke it. And we do that by saying add request, which is the name of the constant and then invoking it. Now remember, we wanna send some data through to this function because we access the text property on that data. So let's send an object through and we need the text property. Now this is gonna be the value that a user enters into that input field. So this thing right here. So I can grab that by first of all, referencing the request form. And then if we take a look at the HTML file over here, we can see that this input field has a name attribute of request. So I can just say request form dot request like so. And that grabs me this request. Oops, I've crossed something off, I think. Nope, it's there. This request field right here, this input field. Now I can just say dot value and it grabs me the value from that field. Okay, cool. So now that is gonna go out, it's gonna fire the function. It's gonna perform these checks first of all. And then if they pass, it's gonna save a new record to the requests collection with that text that a user enters and this initial value for the upvotes. Now, this thing right here, this is an asynchronous task. It takes some time to do. So what we can do is tack on a then method to fire some code when this is complete. So then we'll fire a function when this action is done. And inside here, I just wanna do a couple of things for now. So first of all, request form and then dot reset. This is gonna reset the actual form. So whatever a user types in here, after they've submitted it, then it's gonna reset that and clear out the field. So let me invoke that. That's the first thing I wanted to do. The second thing is to remove the open class from this thing right here. So all of this because it's only showing because it has that open class. Now remember, when we add something, I want this to clear and go so we see this again. So we need to remove that open class. So to do that, let me come down here and I'm gonna say request modal and access the class list and I want to remove the open class. So remember this request modal right here, we had a reference to 
up here it was the new request right here okay so we're taking away that open class from that so then it should be hidden okay now that's the then block done that's the only two things i really want to do at the minute inside here once this is complete we also can tack on a catch block because if there is an error if any of these are thrown these errors we want to catch that error so i'm going to do that inside this catch block we get access to the error as an argument and then inside this function what do i want to do well i want to output the error to the screen so that a user knows if the argument is invalid because of this or if they're unauthenticated so what i'm going to do is grab a reference to the error over here and then i'm going to update the text content of this error so i can do that by saying first of all request form so that's the form and i'm going to use a query selector on that form so it scopes the query to that form and it looks for something inside that form with a class of error now once we have that we can just say the text content of that is going to be equal to the error we receive back dot message and that message property right there is this thing or this thing right so we're outputting that now inside that error field if there's some kind of problem okay then so that's pretty much all done i think the only thing left to do is to test this and in fact what we'll do inside this then block we'll also take this and i'm going to put it here and i'm going to set it back to an empty string because if this fires it means it's been a success and at that point we're resetting the form we're closing the modal i also want to reset the error text to be nothing because now it's been added and there's no error anymore okay that makes sense doesn't it so let's save this and let's cross all our fingers and toes refresh over here and we need to log in because i think i must have signed out at some point okay yep yeah. sean at the net ninja code uk test one two three and log in and now let's try adding a new request i'm going to say node js and submit the request now we don't really see anything over here but if we go over to our database then hopefully we will see now that we have a new collection i'm just going to refresh here because something's not working okay it's not been added so let me go back to the code and look through this okay so we have spelled prevent default incorrectly let me save that and try all of this again and come back over here refresh and if i add a request now i'm going to say node js submit that request it takes a minute or so because it is running that function for the first time and then if we take a look over here and refresh the database i'm hoping now that this has worked awesome we can see the request collection and now we can see this document inside the collection so that all works but what i also want to do is test the errors now by the way we don't see the new tutorial request here because we've not hooked up our ui over here to list the contents of our collection in the database but we will do that later on for now what i want to do is test the errors so if i now add in a load of random characters to make sure it's over 30 characters long then press submit request then we should get an error back and this shouldn't work and we do request must be no more than 30 characters long and hopefully that has not been added to the database either it shouldn't have been and it's not been awesome so that works now i also want to sign out now and then if i inspect just in case someone does this who has too much time on their hands i'm going to add a request and if i just clear all that first of all type something in submit the request now it says only authenticated users can add requests so now it doesn't really matter if when a user comes to the website let me get rid of that when they come to the website if they think they're clever and they can just bypass this over here then they still can't add a request because now we've locked it down inside the firebase cloud function so that all works now and it's looking pretty good 
So now we have all that hooked up and we can add data to the database. What I want to do in the next video is start to address retrieving the data from the database so we can output it right here, all the different tutorial requests. So we'll start that in the next video by looking at real-time data listeners with Firestore.